welcome to St. Stephen's Service Online. We know quite a few of you who are, who are watching today, but there are also people who are subscribing to the YouTube channel who we don't know. And a particular welcome to you. And if you ever want to make yourself known to us, do, do ping us an email. Um, we, we'd like to hear from you. Th this Sunday is a very strange Harvest Sunday. Um, but we are trying to do something, and that is during this coming week, we're inviting anybody who is able to come to St. Stephen's and would like to bring gifts of food as a token of our thanksgiving to God for his provision um, to please leave them um, by the altar. Um, we're, we're not worried if, if somebody pick something up and takes it home because probably their need was great. So we will just allow the, the food to pile up. Uh, no fresh food, please. And um, it, they will, it will then be taken to food bank. Because of that, we, we have an interview this week provided by the Trussell Trust, who are the trust that run all food banks um, throughout this country and have done such an amazing work over the years. And, and we're very thrilled that to be a very small part of that when um, Food Bank are functioning from buildings. They will come back to us eventually one day, unless they find it's better to deliver direct. Who knows? And so we just gather together remotely and worship God together. We come from scattered lives to meet God. Let us recognise his presence with us. As God's people, we have gathered. Shadow of turning 
We come to God as one from whom no secrets are hidden, to ask for his forgiveness and his peace. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins heal and strengthen us by his spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. My dad kicked me out when I was 16, so we went into B&Bs and all this, hostels and all and stuff like that I did and went through bad spells, tried to sort myself out and all. sat me down, you know what I mean? They asked me, do I want, what do I want and stuff like that. I'd sit in here for about not even 10 minutes, you'd have a cup of tea, coffee or a cold drink. You know what I mean? It makes you feel better when, you know, when you've got that more food and then you're coming up here speaking to people tidy and they try to help you with certain things, even if they can't help you a bit, they try to point you in the right direction. So they're always there trying to help. And our prayer for the day. Gracious God, you call us us to fullness of life. Deliver us from unbelief and banish our anxieties with the liberating love of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The reading is from St Matthew chapter 21 verses 33 to the end. The Parable of the Tenants Now Jesus spoke another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard. He put a wall around it, dug a winepress in it, and built a watchtower. Then he rented the vineyard to some farmers and went away on a journey. When the harvest time approached, he sent his servants to the tenants to collect his fruit. The tenants seized his servants. They beat one, killed another, and stoned a third. Then he sent other servants to them, more than the first time, and the tenants treated them the same way. Last of all, he sent his son to them. They will respect my son, he said. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to each other, This is the heir. Come, let's kill him and take his inheritance. So they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? He will bring those wretches to a wretched end, they replied, 
and he will rent the vineyard to other tenants, who will give him his share of the crop at harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures? The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvellous in our eyes. Therefore I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people who will produce its fruit. He who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, but he on whom it falls will be crushed. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard Jesus' parables, they knew he was talking about them. They looked for a way to arrest him, but they were afraid of the crowd, because the people held that he was a prophet. This passage is very challenging, and often a bit of the gospel which we as believers may want to skip over, because, well, we do believe in the Son, so what does it have to say to us? Certainly all of us, but particularly those who do not yet believe, need to take this warning of Jesus very seriously. Some, perhaps many, will write it off as not being true. After all, it's just a story, just a parable. But I recently read a definition of what a parable is, which undermines this approach. It states that parables are extended figures of comparison that often use short stories to teach a truth or answer a question. While the story in a parable is not historical, it is true to life, not a fairy tale. I would also add this, that although not fully fulfilled, it is a reality that is happening and will come to pass. So, the question is, how does this apply to me as a believer? Surely this is talking about Israel, isn't it? And in fact, hasn't God already handed over the tenancy? Therefore, surely it has no bearing on my life. My contention is this, that although by God's grace to us in Christ, he has paid the price for us, there may well be times where perhaps we treat his messengers, fellow believers, his word, teaching, and those who teach, and even the prompting of the Holy Spirit with a similar contempt. When we are challenged about attitudes which are not loving, about sin in our lives, where we're not producing the fruit of the Spirit, where perhaps we're falling short of God's best for us and for those around us. Do I, do we, tend to ignore, to refuse, to militate against, and even kill the message being given? Mm. I know I sometimes do. I thank God that he has put us right with himself through Jesus. But I also desire to be a good tenant, to produce good fruit, to be obedient, and to lovingly tend the vineyard he has placed me in. That word tenant comes up a couple of times. And in fact, I, it reminded me of a poem um, that I will read at, at the end of the service. Um, Dave has talked about whether this story, this parable with, this, with these tenants um, means anything to us or whether it was just for the chief priests. But it also makes me think about harvest. We're, we're um, having a virtual harvest this year. The tenants were dependent on their harvest. Um, and it was a vineyard. And the harvest was obviously grapes. It's a reminder that we are tenants in creation. But this question of Jesus and the chief priests and what Jesus was trying to say is a really interesting one. You could say he was trying to show them 
how selfish and self-obsessed they were. They really did want to love God so much, but they had missed the point. Some of them would later change their minds. So how do we keep our eyes on Jesus and off ourselves, our own desires, assumptions and prejudices? Because we also know that sometimes God uses those to speak to us and to um, interact with us. I wonder how many of us have thought God would work in one way in our lives and he didn't. I can remember a number of situations where that was the case. Jesus reminds us of the sovereign nature of God using this verse. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. It comes from Psalm 118 and it was written first about King David. We think of him as a very successful king, but he really wasn't the most obvious choice. We know that he was the youngest and he was sent to look after sheep, which was a shameful activity. In Psalm 51 in verse 5, it suggests that David might have actually been illegitimate. It says, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me? Something that was a terrible stigma in that society. And his career wasn't great, although of course he killed Goliath, which was amazing. But the king he served wanted to kill him. He escaped and eventually uh, 400 men gathered around him. And this is the description of the men that gathered around him. All those who were in distress or in debt or discontented gathered around him and he became a commander. Really, he was not prime material for kingship. He was the most unlikely person to become king in the most unlikely way. He is the cornerstone of a royal family that now has eternal an eternal kingdom. Our assumptions are often challenged when we're walking, following Jesus. I wonder if yours have been recently, and I wonder what it is that's been challenged. We're all in this together. I encourage you to embrace the challenge. It can only help you love him more. We're now going to sing or listen to Megan sing the words, hide me now under your wings. I wonder what that means to you.
And so let us declare our faith in God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Father God, we thank you for our amazing world, rich in diversity, colour and pattern. We thank you that your hand is upon the ecology that enables it to flourish and prosper. However, we are sorry that mankind has caused that balance to be upturned and that our carelessness and selfishness causes it to decay. Help each one of us to be good stewards of your world and its resources. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for the Trussell Trust and the work of the food bank. Lord, there should not be a need for food banks within this country if only a fair system was in place so that everyone had enough money for the essentials. We hear that it is expected that six emergency parcels per minute will go out from the food bank this autumn, an increase of 61% on last year's needs. We pray for Hannah and her team as they minister to those most in need. Move our hearts to be generous to support this work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness and amazing grace through the work of the church. We pray for continued blessing upon the cafe and the work that Claire does. We pray that, that through those conversations and by walking alongside people, that your name would be glorified and your gift of eternal love offered and accepted. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. When Jesus walked through the towns and villages preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing the sick, he said, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Lord, we pray for workers with your anointing to be within the community of St Stephen's and the churches around Norwich at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. In hearing to God today, um, we have this sent in to us. One day, walking along a track in the countryside, I noticed it was good and pleasant. It felt comfortable and safe. It felt like the journey I, and perhaps many of us, had been on pre-COVID was certainly leading somewhere. Well, however, while on it, it was possible to overlook some of the other things going on in my life. As the track took me over a fallow field, I was reminded of the various weeds 
God had been quietly pointing out during lockdown. Things I might not have noticed if I'd stayed steadily on the track. Weeds that needed confronting and pulling up. I imagine for many of us, lockdown and these present restrictions are not an easy time spiritually. I am grateful that God cares about us so much that he wants to show us the weeds in our lives and help us deal with them. In the Old Testament, God tells the Israelites to let their fields lie fallow every seventh year so they may rest. I'm not suggesting we have a COVID-19 experience every seven years, but a longer than usual enforced time away from the usual patterns of life can open us up to be confronted with the weeds which might otherwise be, have been happy to continue with and, 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 and accommodate, almost certainly to the detriment of the crops he wants to show. So, in in previous generations people have heard from god in lots of different ways and and here is a poem by uh, somebody called george herbert having been a tenant long to a rich lord not thriving I resolved to be bold and make a suit unto him to afford a new small rented lease and cancel the old. In heaven at his manor I him sought. They told me there that he was lately gone about some land which he had dearly bought long since on earth to take possession. I straight returned and knowing his great birth sought him accordingly in great resorts, in cities, theatres, gardens, parks, and courts. At length I heard a ragged noise and mirth of thieves and murderers. There I espied who straight your suit is granted, said, and died. And so, the Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly on us and give us peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
Yeah.